For the purpose of this special, I spoke with civil rights attorney Al Gerhardstein. He told me his office has two or three police shooting cases on the docket at any given time. He represented the mother of Timothy Thomas, the young man whose death led to the riots here in Cincinnati back in 2001. They started all that litigation, he said, with a commitment to seek enduring reform. Is Cincinnati better since 2001? We have made uh, uh, good progress in Cincinnati. Attorney Al Gerhardstein says that came with prioritizing problem solving over just making arrests. More training, greater transparency, and a citizen's complaint authority were also differentiators. However, even if we say we have a, a decent citizen's complaint authority and a, and a better trained police department, they may not feel that on the street. And then when they see somebody kill somebody on camera, you know, an officer kill an individual right there on camera, and then the, you see the prosecutor hem and haw, uh, that's going to outrage everyone. And, uh, and it, it's, it is a call across the country for police abuse to stop. Speaking of public trust, how important is that when you talk about a relationship between the community and the police? The most important thing. I mean, the people I represent and the people the Black United Front uh, works with are the over-police, the people who feel like their community is oppressed as opposed to uh, protected by the police. And if you don't have any measure of trust in the police, then when they are victims of crime, they won't turn to the police. And that's a, an essential step that we are always working to build on. And right now, the, that's strained. This particular newscast is called From Protests to Solutions. If there were three solutions that could come out of this nationwide event, because that's what it's become, what would those solutions in your mind be? So number one, fix the Citizens Complaint Authority. Fund it, staff it. Number two, fix our tracking of all arrests. We have not been tracking the racism that infects uh, arrests in Cincinnati. Number three is we just have to reduce arrests all completely while keeping the peace. And that's done through problem solving, which we've been working on for years. And we just need to make sure that that commitment is renewed and restored and that people really demand it. We've been at a plateau for a few years, and we know what needs to be done. We said we were going to do it when we started the refresh. We just haven't executed on that commitment. And this should be a fire under our pants to get it done. We've seen violence make its way into some of the protests that uh, have happened as a result of George Floyd's death. Uh, does that hurt the work that you guys are trying to do? Violence um, is nothing that we've promoted, but I'm sorry, it just seems that nobody pays attention until uh, the frustration uh, gets to this level. So while we don't condone it, we don't ask for it, we don't promote it, uh, it, it, it does demonstrate the seriousness of the problem and we better pay attention to it and, and get our work done. Tonight, we have been taking a look at other high profile police shootings of unarmed black men that have made national news and remembering some of the lives lost. Who would we, who we wouldn't cover or never cover in the length of this special? So here are those names. Laquan McDonald, in 2014, a Chicago police officer shot the 17-year-old in the back as he walked away. That officer got almost seven years in prison. Eric Garner, in 2014, a New York City officer choked the life out of him. Like Floyd, he said he couldn't breathe. The officer was not indicted. Tamir Rice, in 2014, a Cleveland officer shot the 12-year-old who was holding a replica of a toy airsoft gun. A grand jury declined to indict the officer. Walter Scott, a 2015, in 2015, a North Charleston, South Carolina officer stopped him for a broken brake light. Cell phone video showed Scott running from the officer when he was shot in the back. 
After a local mistrial, the officer pled guilty to federal charges and got 20 years in prison. In 2018, Stephen Clark was shot multiple times by two Sacramento police officers in, his, in the backyard of his grandmother's house as he was holding his cell phone. Neither officer was charged due to insufficient evidence. And the list just goes on and on. This special is all about voices. When we return, one more voice to bring you as we move from protest to solutions.